Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Ubuntu Community Q and A. We do these every week, waves, and we uh, give you an update on what we've been working on, and we take your questions live on the air and answer the, as many of them as we can. We're doing this all on UbuntuOnAir.com. If you are not watching this on UbuntuOnAir.com, then you should go over there because not only is it going to display the video, but underneath it, there's going to be a nice little chat window that connects to our IRC channel where you can ask questions. If you have your own IRC client, you can just join the channel. It's on Freenode. It is hash Ubuntu hyphen on hyphen air. And again, this is where you ask your questions. You start them with the word question in all capital letters, and that way I get a nice highlight of it. Uh, if you're in the channel now, you'll see that uh, T. Simon Q2 is posting a whole bunch of his. So uh, just like that. And we will get through as many of them as we can. Um, Please don't wait until the very end of the show to start asking questions because there is a delay and also we have this big queue of questions and uh, we tend to not be able to finish them all. So if you think of something, ask it right away so that it's got a better chance of being answered. Uh, joining me today is Didier, who many of you will remember from the desktop team and he is now working on uh, snaps a little bit more. So Didier, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and what you're doing now? Sure. Thanks, Michael. So, well, I'm obviously French, <laughs> as you can hear. Uh, I've been, you know, like in the Ubuntu community for, well, from the community itself since 2004. And, um, you know, on the developer community since almost, for almost two years, uh, 10 years now. So it's quite old. Um, so as you told, you know, I've been in the desktop team for very long. I've been the tech lead as well of the desktop team. And now I'm working on Snaps. Uh, as you may have heard, you know, Snaps is, you know, the new hotness, basically. And uh, so I'm doing some developer advocacy, trying to help developers, you know, producing Snaps, uh, giving as well feedback, you know, to the to the development team uh, on, you know, what is working, what is not working, and so on, so that, you know, like we can make, you know, developers' life easier. So, yeah, so this is, you know, like what I'm... I'm doing, you can find myself as Didrox on IRC or, you know, on the Snappy Playpen or, you know, other part, uh, you know, of uh, the usual Ubuntu community. All right. So on the subject of uh, Snaps, we've got some updates on that. Two weeks ago, we had a big sprint in uh, Heidelberg, Germany, where we not only had Canonical and Ubuntu people, but we also had some representatives from Fedora and uh, SUSE, I believe, and Elementary OS. Um, so they all got together and they were talking about, you know, what we need to do to make Snappy a more universal packaging format and get it into these different distros, make it work for different upstream applications. So a lot of good ideas and work items came out of that. You'll start to see a lot of that uh, implemented as time goes on. Uh, I know there have been some good blog posts. I think they're all listed now on snapcraft.io which is our website for all things Snappy, um, building snaps and the tools that are needed to do that. So again, that's snapcraft.io. It's a good place to go to learn more about snaps. And also, as uh, Didier mentioned, we have a Snappy Playpen that's on gitter.im, and I will get that link in just a second. Uh, so this is one of the new style chats. Uh, it's connected to GitHub, and that's where we help people who are working on snapping different packages. So if you are interested in doing that and you want to join us, uh, just one second, I'm trying to pull up the web page. Oh, and uh, Aaron Honeycutt mentions on IRC that we also had representatives from Arch at Heidelberg. So a lot of different distros, truly cross-platform uh, effort going on there. All right. pasting the uh, snappy playpen into the IRC. Now, if anybody's interested in that, um, we tend to focus on that on Tuesdays, but we're there all the time also. So if you can't make it on a Tuesday, you can come in any time and uh, we will do our best to help you. Uh, in other updates, let's see, we had 16.04.1. Uh, released and with it the upgrade path from 1404. So if you are still on the previous LTS release of Ubuntu, you can now upgrade directly to 1604. Um, 
I did that on my home server last week and everything went nice and smoothly. So good time to upgrade, get the latest and greatest of everything. All right, and I think that is all of the updates that I have, and we've got plenty of questions here in the IRC. Thanks to T. Simon, Q2, and Blue2. So uh, we'll start answering those as we can. And again, we've got Didier here who can answer questions about snaps better than I can. So this is your opportunity to get some good questions in. But only snaps. Um, I know nothing about depth, so you know that. <laughs> Don't listen to him. He's an expert in it. He was in, how long were you in the desktop team? It was a while, wasn't it? Well, I officially joined Canonical, you know, in, two, in January 2010. But, you know, like my first packages, I guess, you know, as a, as a part-time, you know, contributor was in 2006 or seven or something like that. All right. So you can ask him all about desktop packaging, too, if you want. <laughs> but really, ask about snaps, because those are much more fun at the moment. Oh, and uh, to let everybody know, because this will probably come up in some of the answers, next week we are going to have Thomas Voss on as our guest. He is the Unity APIs guy, and he's going to talk about things like the new messaging framework uh, and whatnot that are, have been worked on. And I know we've gotten a lot of questions about these in the last few months. So we are finally managed to uh, find a time where we can have him on as a guest. So that will be next week, same time, same place. All right, let's, let's jump into the questions. Blue2 asked like the first 10 or so. So this first one is proprietary drivers for Unity 8. Any news or open source drivers are the future? Um, open source drivers are definitely going to be a big part of the future. Uh, not only is Intel working fine with Mir and Unity 8, uh, but uh, AMD now is backing the open source drivers uh, instead of binary blobs. So that's a big movement for them, and that's going to help us quite a bit. NVIDIA is still the holdout on this, um, and I don't have any news about proprietary driver support for these other than um, what they announced a few months ago that they were working on it. I think the uh, open source Nouveau drivers, though, uh, work with Unity 8. Next question. In Unity 7, you can now move the launcher to the bottom. Will you be able to do so in Unity 8? I don't know what the plans are, probably because one of the goals of Unity 8 is feature parity with Unity 7, so that will probably happen. Should be pretty easy, probably easier to do in Unity 8 because it is uh, Qt and QML, which is a lot easier to work with in terms of uh, making those kinds of changes. Let's see, uh, currently Unity 8 looks like it involves a lot of dragging event change. Um, do you mean like dragging with the mouse cursor? I don't know. I'm I'm not sure what you mean by that. I did when I used Unity 8. I used you know the same kind of keyboard shortcuts that I used on Unity 7. So, oh, unless you mean like swipe gestures and apps, in which case, yeah, that is still um, something that the toolkit's working on addressing. So we had. Um, I don't remember who we had on. We had somebody from the SDK on not too long ago, I think. Uh, and we went over some of the changes that are going into the toolkit to make it work better on uh, mouse and keyboard devices. So there's work going on there to try and change a lot of these swipe gesture interfaces and interact you can do easily with a keyboard and mouse. So that'll make that better. I think the big one right now is the bottom edge gestures. So that's kind of the the, the major one to tackle. All right, next one. Since you have a good have a good relationship with Dell, can we expect Ubuntu convertibles when the first LTS with Unity 8 arrives? I have no insight onto that. I would love to have some Dell convertibles. Um, I'd also like to see like the Lenovo convertibles, which are really nice laptops also, um, and really anybody who's who's got good hardware. So. I can't say for sure, but I would like to see it also. Will we be able to change permissions of snaps on the fly? For example, internet, cam, and microphone. So Didier, this is one that you could answer, right? 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is planned. Uh, it's not going to, to happen soon, to be honest, uh, because there is a lot of work to do that compared to our current technology. But yeah, this is definitely on the roadmap uh, to be able to turn on and off, you know, dynamically uh, the permission and having some prompts, you know, uh, they will as well have another model, like uh, you want to pick a file, for instance, then, you know, like you will get, you know, dialogue asking, you know, which file you give access to this application in particular. And the application will only be able to see that file, that particular file. So, yeah, so well, this is coming, but for now we don't have any timeline for this. And in the uh, new system settings app in Unity 8, there's already an interface for managing that. It's right now backed by uh, clicks. But as soon as that stuff moves over to supporting snaps, they'll probably wire that interface up to whatever the snap API is for changing permissions. Right. And right, uh, you know, for moving from click to snaps, as we will need as well, you know, feature parity, you know, like uh, I guess, you know, the push to move from click to snaps, you know, will help, you know, pr get that on a, some kind of priority list. Right. Uh, the next one is also, I think, for you. Will we be asked for the permissions the first time you open or or when you install an app? Yeah, so as I told, this is going to be some kind of mixed model. Uh, so for things like, you know, picking a file or getting access to the camera, uh, you know, something which is more or less, you know, uh, dynamic or in context, uh, this is going to be uh, once, you know, the app use the features, even if it needs still to declare it. Uh, for, you know, like uh, the, the other ones and, you know, for the time being anyway, uh, in Snap Web, you will have a way, you know, to toggle on and off uh, the permission for every uh, every app. So right now it's going to be at install time, it's going to be static, uh, static, but uh, in the future, you know, more, most of them will move, you know, to a more dynamic workflow. All right, next one. Can we see some improved gaming optimizations in Ubuntu, like turning off super and alt key, native alt uh, tab, or for all apps in Mir, suppressing notification pop-ups, blah, 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 blah. So basically making it, making Unity less in the way when you're doing full screen gaming. Um, I don't know what work is being done on that. That would be a question for the Unity team. Uh, I know it has come up before, especially things like the the super key opening the dash when you're in the middle of the game. So I know they're aware of it. I don't know what the, the plans are for that. Right, next question. Will the multi-monitor support be better in Unity 8 than in Unity 7? If yes, in what ways? Um, yes, it should be because both Mir and Unity 8 are being developed from the start with, the, with this in mind. Um, I know one of the big things that Unity 8 and Mir are supposed to be able to provide, and the toolkit also, um, is being able to have different um, scaling factors on different monitors depending on resolution. So if you have one like 4K monitor and one standard resolution monitor, you're not going to have wildly different sizes of windows when you move from one to the other. So that, that'll be a good thing. Yeah, this is one of the many issues we had at the time when we were developing, you know, Unity 7 and Compiz. It's like an all of, a lot of things, you know, were based on, you know, what was the technology in 2007 or 8, because this was the first, you know, like Compiz version. And a lot, you know, a lot of that changed. So we, we adapted a little bit, you know, with uh, some high DPI support and so on. But, you know, it can't be as good as, you know, being built from the ground up. So, yeah, Unity 8 will help a lot, you know, with all these kind of context changes and so on. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Bluetooth is asking, is it possible to change the installation folder of snaps? So right now they installed a slash snap. Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> uh, the thing is that, you know, like we want to, to keep the snap being able to install in alongside, you know, your normal system. And one of the core value of snap is that the application is relocatable. So basically you can take the directory, move somewhere else. And normally if the snap is well built, you know, like the snap will still run. However, you know, to not conflict with the system, we have everything on, you know, slash snap. So they are not really installed in that directory, actually. The snap is just one file, one big archive file, which is a squash FS, but we can think of it as a zip. And the zip is 
dynamically, you know, mounted. So basically, you know, like we don't extract and dump the folder on disk. We just by mount. It's something which is in memory, and you know, we we make it available on what we call dollar snap, which is var, which is a, a slash snap, slash snap name, then and slash version, so that we can have multiple versions. And so for that to work, basically, we need to ensure that we have well-known path for the snap. Uh, so this is why, you know, like uh, the snap name is, uh, the snap path basically is forced, you know, into that directory. And so you, you are not able, you know, to, to decide where, you know, you want to extract your snap. And that's a really interesting difference between snaps and like uh, a, a dev package. You know, when you, when you apt install something, you'll often see it, you know, like, a hundred kilobytes of download and then a hundred megabytes of disk space used. Um, and that difference is because it unpacks the, the compressed package uh, onto your file system. Whereas with snaps, they stay in that compressed file system, that squash FS, um, which is read only and it's fast to read. Uh, so you don't really have that slowdown when you're loading stuff. And because it's read only, you don't have to worry about writing anything back to that archive. And so that lets us keep that, the disk usage down. Yeah, and it's technologies that, uh, you know, like uh, we control for, for, for quite a long time because all the live CDs, I guess it's since 2006 or something like that, you know, are based on that technology. So basically, you know, Squash FS is not something, you know, really new, or, you know, like which has a lot of bugs and so on, because it's it's really what is backing up, you know, our, our live CD technology since then. So yeah, it's a proof, you know, like technology. And um, in terms of compression, basically, we have a one third compression. So, you know, the, the rate of compression basically is really, really good. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one, can you think of apps that won't work as intended with snaps anymore, other than harmful software? Uh, I'll, depending on your definition of app, there's a lot of stuff that is dead packaged that would not make sense to have as a snap package because snaps are really meant to be standalone, independent things. So you're not going to be able to do like, you know, highly integrated libraries and distro style packages like you're not going to put gtk in a snap ah we don't that, that stuff GTK in a snap it's going to be called the runtime snap so uh, okay yeah but it's so, not okay. a snap as okay, an application good. snap i guess that's what you mean right yeah 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 so so snaps are going to have you know we've got kernel snaps already um we've got you know runtime snaps that didier was mentioning um but but there's still oh a lot God. of stuff that's really going to be it's there for integration and building up that platform that application snaps run on top of. All right, let's see what's next. Uh, will Steam and its games run on Unity 8? What about drivers? Will we be able to install proprietary drivers for Libertine apps? Uh, so tackling the first one, they should. Most of those apps, um, or sorry, most of those games really just want an OpenGL context. And uh, as long as they can get that, then they bypass the rest of the display server. So for example, SDL games already run on top of Mir and Unity 8. So unless there's of either Steam or the games themselves that expect X to be there instead of just going directly to OpenGL, um, there's not going to be a problem running those. As far as proprietary drivers for Libertine apps, I'm not really sure how that works. I know the Libertine apps in Xmir run inside a modified Xorg that can use X drivers, but I don't know. I'm not real clear on how that all works together. I know that you could use proprietary or you could use X drivers on Xmir back when we were using that as the system compositor. So I'm sure that all still is there, but I don't know how that works inside the Libertine container. That would be a question to ask uh, Stephen Webb. Maybe we'll have him on uh, sometime in the next few weeks. All right, and I think we finally made it through all of Blue 2's questions. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we've got all of Simon's questions, so we'll start into those. Uh, 
Simon again, when is David Kelly going to get Ubuntu membership? Um, which he's asked several times now. Um, and I think that's a question to ask David Kelly. Um, you should encourage him to create his application in the wiki and uh, apply for Ubuntu membership. I, my feeling is he's done enough to, uh, to warrant getting membership. Yeah, but he's, you know, watching dogs, you know, every day, all the time. So I guess he yeah. has <laughs> He's bored. Yeah, he's tell the team, hey, hey, in your spare time, write some more stuff on the wiki. Exactly. That, that is a bit of a hard sell. All right, here's an interesting question from Simon. What did you do before working at Canonical? So Didier, I'll let you take that one first. Okay, so I work in a very big, you know, uh, IT company in France, uh, which is producing some CAD software. Uh, so, you know, about FreeCAD and so on, probably. Uh, so the, it was, you know, another company not doing open source, uh, developing, you know, very big, you know, softwares to build uh, cars or planes and so on. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was uh, I was doing some computer science there uh, in this very proprietary mindset company. <laughs> so you know, like working then on Ubuntu was on my spare time. And it was a relief uh, because of my open source background and you know, like switching to Canonical then has been awesome for this. And so I knew Michael. Uh, well, before I worked at Canonical, I was doing a lot of uh, contract development. So I was doing uh, mostly internal websites, a few external ones. Um, but I would be on six or 12 months contracts. So I, I did a lot of jumping around from one place to another. Immediately before Canonical, I was working at a uh, cancer hospital, uh, doing some websites, some internal websites that the, the doctors and the researchers were using to track their uh, different studies that they were doing. Before that, I worked at newspapers. I worked at uh, big banks. I worked at uh, Verizon for a little while. So I've jumped around and done a little bit of everything before landing at Canonical. And actually, Canonical's the longest job that I've ever had um, without moving anywhere. So yeah, when did you start? finally found some place. What? When did you start at Canonical? It's been at Canonical? Um, let's see. 2011, I think. OK, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, five, I'm five, five and a half years in, so it must okay. have been 2011. Yeah. Uh, and before that, I was also involved in the Ubuntu community. Um, I got hooked in working on the Loco team portal by Daniel Holbach. So that really started my uh, my Ubuntu contribution career, which lined up well because it was Django. And at the time, I was working at the, the cancer hospital and having to learn Django for that. So it all lined up well for me. All right, here's a hard question. What is your favorite community run team in Ubuntu? And that's kind of like asking which of my children is my favorite. Uh, oh, French Loco team. I, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, I suppose we could play favorites with, the, with our Loco teams. Yeah, I really don't have a favorite. They, they're all, you know, they're, they're like family. You don't have favorites. There might be some that you don't like, but uh, come on, you won't get out that. <laughs> All right, we're we're gonna pass over that one. That's weak. I'm so yeah, <laughs> it is, but we're going to do it anyway. All right, uh, this one's for me. Where did you get your phone? How hard was it getting a Bluetooth touch on it? And does it work like a normal phone? So I got mine from Canonical, actually. They sent me a Nexus 4 back in summer of 2013. So this was back when we were, I think, still supporting the Galaxy Nexus images. So that tells you how, how far along we were in development of that. So they sent me this Nexus 4, bought it off of eBay or something, and had it shipped to me. Um, came with Android on it. I plugged it in, powered it on long enough to uh, enable debug mode, and then uh, ran Fablet Flash against it. And that was it. That's all it took to get it running Ubuntu Touch. 
So I think I ran Android on it for literally about five minutes before I had Ubuntu on it. So super, super easy. And really, all the devices would be like that now. You know, that it's not Fablet Flash anymore. It's Ubuntu Device Flash. Uh, it's the same thing. It'll detect your device. You'll get the right images you need. It'll put them on there and run all the installation stuff for you. So it's really dead simple to put Ubuntu Touch on these devices. All right, next question is, what is your preferred terminal package? I'm not sure what you mean by terminal package. If you mean terminal emulator, uh, I've started using Terminator recently because I like the whole uh, split screen ability. Although if I'm not on a desktop, like on all my servers and stuff, uh, Biobu is a must have. Uh, so that's using Tmux now, and it's got all kinds of real nice configurations to give you kind of like a tabbed interface uh, strictly in the terminal. So that's really nice. I, I can't I can't work on remote machines or even local containers anymore without it. I've just become so used to it. How about you, Didier? Oh, you took me by surprise. Uh, no, I would say, you know, Biobu as well. Uh, I I'm using it a lot. I like, you know, the tab features, especially when you are on a server and you SSH in, and to be able, you know, like to to restart when you stopped. Uh, I, I stopped using, you know, screen uh, directly uh, since you know there is Biobu because you have all the shortcuts and so on. So, so yeah. And uh, otherwise, you know, as you know, like the terminal app I'm using, I just you know, you know, GNOME terminal. I'm quite boring. Uh, I was using a lot Terminator uh, in you know, some years ago. The thing is that it was crashing a lot. Um, and so I lost a lot of, you know, Unity builds along the way. And at the time, Unity was taking 40 minutes to build. So, <laughs> you know, wow. based on this frustration, you know, and I'm sure now that Terminator is way better than it was at the time. I switched back to GNOME. Yeah, I've never, had a, I've never had a single crash on it. And I've been using it for at least a couple of years now. Yeah, I, I think I used it. You know, it was 2010 or something like that. So, uh, yeah. so it might have been might have been real early back then. All right, the next one uh, I think is a rhetorical question because Simon probably knows the answer to that. Uh, he's asking when is checksumming support for tar and zip files coming to Snapcraft? Uh, and I'd say he knows the answer to that because I believe he's the one who implemented this feature uh, and submitted it to Snapcraft. So Simon, if you want to answer in uh, the IRC when that's coming, um, I don't know. Ha has your has your patch landed yet? I know I just had a patch land in Snapcraft, and I'm waiting for that to come out in a release. All right. Uh, the next one is Simon making fun of my light in the background. So I'm going to skip that because we do this every time I'm on. Um, it's just a fan. Nothing interesting about it. Uh, what is something you wish could be improved about the Ubuntu community? So I would really like to see local teams becoming more active again. Uh, we, we've hit kind of a slump in local team activity that I'm working with the local council to try and get uh, kickstarted again. Uh, we're working on officially uh, subscribing to the meetup.com accounts that we were testing for the past few months. Um, so we're, we're going to make that available to local teams to uh, to start using to help them attract more people to their events. And of course, improving the local team portal also is on the list. If anybody is uh, wanting to contribute to that, it's a real nice Python Django app. It's real easy to get started in, uh, and we can use some development help on that. So if you're interested in helping out on loco.ubuntu.com, please get with me on IRC, and uh, I will help you get the code and get it running and uh, point you at the long list of bugs we've accumulated on it. Uh, how about you, Didier? Anything you want to see improved in the Ubuntu community? Um, well, I, I know more, you know, the local team side, uh, especially the French local team, uh, because I was part of, you know, like uh, the leader when I was still living in Paris uh, some years ago. Um, I, I I like the fact, you know, in the French local team in particular, they want to stay as much as possible uh, independent from Canonical. And I guess, you know, this is very good, you know, in terms of 
uh, having, you know, like their own way of, you know, deciding things and not being influenced and just, you know, like uh, uh, wanting to push Ubuntu project itself. Uh, I, I wish, you know, that was more the case with a lot of, you know, local team uh, to not, you know, expect, uh, you know, the company behind Ubuntu, you know, uh, to give everything, you know, or, you know, like uh, to, to provide, you know, like uh, uh, a framework or things like that. So to have, you know, local team being, you know, more independent and, you know, re-energized and, you know, finding projects by themselves, you know, this is what is, is good about the community. And I think, you know, it's a real chance. Uh, around the project like Ubuntu. So, you know, like if more, you know, people uh, would engage into this, I would be really happy to see this happen. All right. Next question is, how many bugs do you have assigned to yourself in Launchpad? I'm afraid to even look, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I know it's a lot. I know there's a lot more that really probably should be assigned to me, uh, especially from uh, the developer portal that are currently unassigned. So we'll, we'll just leave it as a lot. So actually, I did have a look for myself. And uh, well, now it's uh, 858. <laughs> but most of them are closed, right? Uh, oh, OK. So those that are not closed, I have on, only 12 of them. Wow, it's not bad. <laughs> wow, that's. That's really good, actually. <laughs> well done, Didier. <laughs> but to be honest, I stopped assigning bugs to myself, you know, quite some time ago now. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to I'm going to reassign all of mine to, to you so that my st that's look better. <laughs> Don't even try. All right. Uh, Simon's asking, what, if any, development have you, you done lately? Anything notable? So uh, just yesterday, I up a patch to Snapcraft. Uh, to fix a bug that I ran into while I was snapping the Arduino IDE. So that was my most recent stuff. I've done quite a bit um, either with snaps or uh, with the developer portal itself lately. How about you, Didier? What development are you doing lately? Um, so I've done something which is going to be out soon, I hope, which is called Code Labs for Snap. And, you know, maybe we'll use the same for Juju and, you know, like uh, all the math and so on, um, which is going to be a tool to help developers, you know, getting started and doing step-by-step, -step, you know, per topic uh, subject. Um, so, yeah, it was quite fun because the backend is in Go and, you know, the front end is in Polymer JS. Uh, using some part of some web, you know, technology from Google. Uh, so, yeah, I'm quite excited to see this happening because it's something that I had in my mind for quite some time. And I guess this is go really going to help developers. Nice. Looking forward to that. All right. Uh, last one on Simon's list, or at least the first list. Uh, when did you start using Linux? With what distro and what OS did you come from? And what did you like better about Linux? Uh, so I think I've told my story on here before. Uh, way back in 1999, uh, I was working at a small local ISP that ran mostly Solaris on their servers. And I, I had you know, heard about this Linux thing. I was starting to learn about open source. Uh, and so I had an old... I don't think it was a 486. I think it was actually a Pentium, but not a very powerful Pentium old PC. Um, and I went to Best Buy and I bought a box set of Caldera Open Linux. And uh, it came on two different CD-ROMs. And that was my first foray into Linux. And the thing that I liked most about that com coming from Solaris um, was the GNU tools and the fact that all the instructions that I had read previously on the internet were almost all using GNU tools and I had to translate them into uh, Solaris uh, equivalents when I have tried to do anything. So compiling uh, Perl modules from CPAN on Solaris was like a days long process for us there. And then when I had you know Linux and I could just run the Perl command to install the CPAN modules and they all just work that was like 
you know that that moment where you know the angels are singing and the lights come on and everything's great that was it um so, so that was the biggest the biggest selling point for me on linux and uh as you use you know sans uh did you notice the difference with the kill hole command between you know solaris and you know <laughs> the GNU version of it so yeah I so like there there were the all the tar flags I, if I remember right, were different between Solaris and GNU, yeah. uh, so so it took some getting used to. And I I still use a lot of um, stuff that I learned on Solaris instead of the better way of doing it in Linux. <laughs> so like I I still use PS dash EF just because that's you know hardwired into my brain now instead of uh, the the more common PS AUX or whatever that it that most people use. So I still have a, a few. Um, a few solaricisms stuck in my head that will probably never go away. And yeah, for me, it was the other, other way around. You know, I started with Linux, and so my previous job, I, I was administering a lot of Unixes, uh, HP UX, uh, Irix, and uh, Sun Solaris, and so AX as well. And I remember in particular, like to have used a kill hole command, but I use it the Linux way. So basically, you know, in on any Linux distribution, you can say kill all name of the process, and it's going to kill all those process matching these names. And on Sun Solaris, you know, if you run kill all name of a process, it's just ignoring the argument because the argument doesn't exist. <laughs> and so basically, it's killing all the process on your machines. And this was a production machine. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> so this is how I learn, you know, like, yeah, maybe, you know, like, uh, Look for the man page before running a command. You know, having the same experience before expecting the same. Um, yeah, for me, I started in so the first time I encountered Linux was in '98. Actually, uh, it was I was at school and uh, basically I just installed some 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 computers at school with the Red Hat six at the time it was. So it wasn't real. It was really you know just Red Hat the distribution. Um, but then, you know, like, uh, well, I didn't, you know, stay long on this. Uh, and I guess the first time I really switched was in 2001 with Mandrake, uh, which was really popular as, you know, like uh, as a beginner distribution at the time. Mandrake became Mandriva. Now we have Magia and so on as other distros coming from it. Um, what I did really like at the time is that uh, you had a lot of options. Uh, and of course, you know, when you know, one of the first questions from the installer was, what do you want to install? I say all. <laughs> then I, I get and again, KD with a lot with, I guess it was five different, um, you know, uh, notes support, you know, that you can edit. And uh, so I, I was edit, KD, uh, you know, a lot of other from Xubuntu, from uh, XFC and so on. So it, so it was great, but it was then, you know, like I, I learned that the hard way. Um, so yeah, so then I switched to 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 Debian basically, and uh, for various reasons, I needed, I was you know going from uh, the high school to, uh, to 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 a project where we were installing you know Linux distribution in Africa, and uh, I was thinking at the time like in 2004, it was the end like December 2004, like Debian wasn't the best fit, and that's where I, you know like. Uh, I, uh, I saw oh, there was this Debian version of, uh, of you know, like uh, Linux, which is really cool and really user friendly with default choices and so on. And so it was Ubuntu, and it was in 2000, uh, it was in December 2004. And so that's how it started. Uh, so, yeah, like I, I really like the fact that Ubuntu made op opinionated choices, you know, to fix the issue of, you know, giving a lot of options at the start and then you are, you are lost. Uh, and so it's Sometimes you know, like killing your freedom to have too many choices. So yeah, so I, I that's you know my preferred you know like uh, my preferred way is that we can have your, uh, choice and every distribution is you know like uh, uh, every distribution have their own you know facet and their own choices. All right, moving along, Dragos, uh, he's asking. He's actually got a uh, a package error uh, in. Dpackage or apt. Um, that's not really the kind of thing we can easily help you with on uh, a broadcast like this. But if you go to hashubuntu-devel, uh, there are people there 
who can help you get that sorted out. Uh, it sounds like there's just a dependency conflict. And so this is one of the things that Snap is designed to fix is, you know, Snaps aren't going to have uh, these kinds of dependency conflicts that you're currently running into. But like I said, people in uh, ubuntu dash devel should be able to help you get that sorted out with a few apt commands or depackage commands. All right, next question also from Dragos. Uh, can Ubuntu phone or tablet run, run games and wine? Uh, it can run games. I mentioned earlier that it'll run SDL games. So, so things like uh, Tux Racer works on it. Um, as far as because wine, I think is only x86. Uh, and these the, the phones and tablets are running ARM CPUs. So, you know, it wine converts api calls between windows and linux apis but it doesn't try and do uh cpu emulation so i don't think that will work on on those devices and uh, on that same note uh, his next question is can arm ubuntu phone run x86 apps no it cannot um, it's possible that you could run some kind of emulator on that but that is going to be horribly slow on those devices. Yeah, I don't even try to do that. <laughs> All right. Um, the next question is from Sammy the Squirrel. Uh, he's asking, I'm waiting for Jay Castro to do a data dump to save Ubuntu discourse from termination. There has been no official follow-up, though. I brought the top-level Ubuntu domain. How can I make this work so we can save discourse.ubuntu.com? Um, I'm hoping that you've talked to George already. If not, he's the, the person to ask that question to. Um, so yeah, Jay Castro on IRC, or you know, email him if you've got his email. If you can't get in touch with him, then uh, give me a ping on IRC, and I'll try and help you out. All right, Quality Mix is asking for suggestions for packaging a binary exported from a FAME engine. I'm not sure what a FAME engine is. Um, if you're looking for snap packaging, though, I mean, you can uh, either use snap. Are you familiar with this? You probably cheat, you know, like some, some lines below it. So it's a game engine that you want. To oh, OK. Um, to snap package it, if you've already got the binary, you can just you know point to it and uh, tell it to copy those binary files that you need into the snap package. That's actually really easy. Uh, that's what I'm doing for the Arduino snap at the moment. So you can do that with Snapcraft, or you can actually you don't have to use Snapcraft to build a snap. You can use uh, you can build your own snap metadata file and uh, just create a snap package that way. Snapcraft is really good for if you're building from source or collecting stuff from a bunch of different sources and you want to automate that. So those are your two best options. Uh, go to snapcraft.io to learn more about how to do that uh, and join the Snappy Playpen. Uh, the link is posted uh, higher up, actually probably down below in the IRC chat from where your question was. Um, and we can help you there. All right, Sammy the Squirrel says, talking about standards, now that 16.04 and possibly 16.04.1 is getting out of the way, what new GNU Linux standards are coming down the pike that may challenge us in the future in the Ubuntu community? Uh, I know one of the big things going on right now that I think Martin Pitt is driving uh, is converting the user session to start using systemd as the session in it. So currently, uh, systemd runs the system in it. So it brings up all your system services and stuff. Uh, but when you log into Unity itself, or even I think um, like Zubuntu or GNOME or any of those, it's still using Upstart to run your user session uh, services. So there's work now going into moving all of those off of Upstart and onto System D, uh, so that everything will be System D going forward. As far as I know, that's the only real big change that's that's in progress right now. Didier, do you know of any others that I might have missed? No, I guess, you know, like, uh, this is the only one uh, that is, you know, really facing, you know, users anyway, I would say. So. All right. 
Simon's got a whole slew of other questions for us, um, and we're running short on time, so I'm going to skip over a few of these. Uh, are, are you a Daniel Holbach hugger? I think that's a yes from both of us, isn't it, Didier? Yeah, yeah. You yes. really can't, I'm not, I'm you can't I'm, spend... I'm a PT fan. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, I guess as well, you know, as part of you know the Daniel figure. Oh. Yeah, you, you can't be around Daniel Holbach for long without uh, being a, a Daniel hugger. Uh, and th there is there's the Launchpad team. If you want, if you have hugged Daniel Holbach and you want to join that team, uh, you, you get a nice little badge or something. I don't even know what. All right. Uh, T. Simon is asking, what was your first form of contribution to Ubuntu, and how long after that did you get membership? So I talked about mine a little bit. My first contributions were towards the uh, Loco team portal. And it was, well, actually, I did some work with the Loco, my Loco team before that. So that may have been my first con contribution. I'd have to go back and check, because I honestly don't remember what I did first. Um, but I think I was involved for about a year before I went for membership. Yeah, I, I, I don't even remember, to be honest. Like, as I told you, you know, I was part of the French community since, you know, the end of 2004. So this is some kind of contribution. Um, moderator on the wiki, on the forum, and so on, uh, from the French local team. On Ubuntu, I, I remember the moment I pushed my first package. <laughs> so I was basically, you know, like, a, I was a community, you know, member, and I got my membership, you know, before, you know, pushing some packages and so on to Ubuntu. Uh, yeah, so I still remember my first package. I still remember looking at Launchpad and, you know, like looking at this little circle and following the build and so on. I don't even remember which package it was, to be honest. But um, yeah, it should have been something desktop related, I guess. <laughs> But uh, my first big contribution, basically, it was about uh, you know updating the GNOME stacks uh, with uh, so basically in you know like a, as soon as you know the new version you know was out for GNOME uh, with uh, Sebastian Maché, we were you know just packaging everything and then you know like we were done in the day. All right, uh, next question: What is 14.04.5 and when does it come out? So our LTS releases get these point releases uh, over the course of their, their life cycle. And that will bring things like newer kernel, newer driver support, uh, newer graphic stack, um, and some other improvements. But it's mostly around just uh, enabling uh, the hardware that you're currently running it on. Uh, I don't know when that one comes out. Didier, do you know? Happen to know off the top of your head? Basically, there is a link, you know, for every release where you can check, uh, you know, the different uh, the different timelines, and it's uh, the fourth of August, so it's on first day actually. As you as usual, you know, if people didn't notice, we always release everything on first day, uh, and so I just passed it, you know, like the the wiki links, uh, uh, so that people, you know, can check. All right. Uh, besides Unity 8, what are you looking forward to in Ubuntu 16.10, flavors included? And uh, Simon's throwing his own in there. Uh, he's looking forward to LX Cute on, on Lubuntu. So I guess that's coming in 16.10. Yeah, I'm looking forward, you know, to have all my application be snapped and having, you know, like the latest freshness and goodness, you know, from a stream directly delivered to my desktop in a secure way. Yeah, it's all the snap. If we're if I can't claim Unity eight, it's going to be all the snap improvements that are going to be coming in sixteen ten. All right, uh, he's asking, what's the best converged apps all about? So actually, I haven't followed this too much, but there's a contest going on right now uh, for the best converged apps. So that these are apps that will work across the phone, the tablet, and the desktop. Um, I'm not sure who's running that contest. Do you know Didier? No, probably someone in marketing, but I don't really know those guys. So, <laughs> no, to be honest, <laughs> uh, no, I, I don't know at all. To be honest, who is running that? Uh, I, I know there is a blog post on Insights, so if you want to look at um, its Insights, uh, well, you just Google for Insights on Ubuntu, and uh, you will be able to find the post, I guess. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite non-Unity desktop environment? Have you seen or tried LXQt? And if so, do you like it? 
So I used to try a bunch of different ones. Yeah, I'd bounce around between Unity and uh, Gnome Shell and KDE and uh, XFCE. Uh, I haven't done that really in a few years, though. Um, I, I try and keep up with what they're doing. Uh, I especially have been trying to keep up with what uh, is going on in Kubuntu and KDE. Uh, they've got a lot of uh, real interesting projects at the moment. Uh, but there's a lot going on, and it's hard to keep up. And it's, you know, like most of the time, it's a question of habits. Uh, I tried Gnome Shell, you know, again, um, a year ago, or something like that. Uh, but then, then, you know, you have the muscle memories for your key bindings and so on. So you are always, you know, it's always less comfortable. Uh, and it's because I'm a Unity user. Uh, you know, the, con the, the, con the opposite is true as well. You know, someone used to Gnome Shell uh, will be less comfortable for a while in the Unity environment because they have their habits and so on. So it, it's a little bit hard. And, uh, you know, to switch between desktop environment and, you know, to have a very clear, uh, like, non-biased opinion. Michael? Oh, sorry. Was I muted for all that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. So I'll, re I'll repeat that. Uh, Sammy the Squirrel is asking, what recent Ubuntu sprints and local meetups can you report back from? Have there been any in France recently? Uh, I guess the last uh, we had the Ubuntu party in Paris. Uh, it was it was in May in the last week of. The, yeah, the, the last weekend of May, um, I've been there. It was really fun. Uh, and as well, there are some meetups that we try to organize. Uh, but I guess in March we didn't get we didn't get any. So we made one in March on Snaps. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, so this is you know like uh, the meetups. Of course, you know like there is a lot of weekly uh, we can call that meetups, but it's you know. Uh, more uh, dinner or something like that in a restaurant, but it's see you know like user groups, you know, uh, uh, meeting and talking, and you know like this is good for you know the community in general, you know, in terms of sharing experiences and so on. So we have a lot of this, but you know like a more formal meetup and so on. It was it was in May last time. Um, I know there's also an upcoming UbuCon uh, in Germany. I think it's in Berlin. Um, it's UbuCon EU, so it's going to be a European-wide UbuCon. They're really trying to ramp up uh, what used to be UbuCon DE, uh, so that you know it's not in France, but it's you know a train ride away. Um, and also this weekend there is UbuCon LA, that's UbuCon Latin America, uh, down in Lima, Peru, and uh, Jose is organizing that one. So if you are in South America and you can make it there this weekend, uh, that's going to be a nice showing. He's also trying to get uh, live streaming set up for that. So if you speak Spanish but you can't make it there, uh, you should be able to watch it live as it's happening. Uh, I haven't actually been to many meetups lately. The Florida team has been active down in the Miami area. Uh, which is in my state, but is like a six hour drive away. So I haven't really made any of those, even though Aaron keeps threatening to uh, to kidnap me and drag me down for one of those. Uh, but he's been doing a lot of really good work there and just recently had, um, he, he co-hosted an event with uh, a Fedora user group and the, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the organization. And I'm failing. Um, so, Aaron, if you could post the name of that organization you worked with on that recent uh, the, uh, Girl Code It or something, I think it is. Or Girl Develop It, that might have been it. Anyway, he, he's been running a bunch of events down in the, in the Miami area. And uh, by the way, we are, we are trying to organize soon, uh, like in the next couple of months, you know, like a lot of meetups uh, around Snap and so on. So we are going to, 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 to produce some kind of, you know, like uh, general templates uh, for slide deck, like a very short one. And then, you know, like a guide on just how to show to people, you know, how to install a snap, how to create your first snap and so on. So something, you know, like very developer oriented and user oriented at the same time. 
So um, if you are interested into this, you know, like uh, just ping me on RC, uh, the drops, uh, and you know, in the following days and so on, and I will keep you posted. Uh, again, you know, it's going to be in a couple of months or something, but you know, it will be really nice, you know, to go to a lot of meetups and to talk about, you know, this because there is a lot of questions around it, and so you know, having something so that people can be a little bit more familiar with it will help. If you are excited by this and if you want to run a meetup, you know, you don't need to get in touch with us. All right. Uh, Nick011 is asking, do you know if the Ubuntu Touch for the Fairphone 2 is ready for daily driver? I will immediately buy one when it's ready. Um, the best person to ask that is uh, Mario Grip on, RE on IRC uh, or go to devices.ubports.com and check the status of that. I have been working with him on it, and uh, he's gotten quite a bit of work done in the past month to get it uh, to where it's really a, a good, um, well-supported device. Um, I think there might be a couple things still left to implement before it works, but uh, some of the trickier stuff he's gotten working. I've got mine right here all taken apart because it's not actually charging anymore, uh, so I haven't been able to test it recently. Uh, I think I need a new battery. But uh, yeah, go to ubports.com, talk to Mario Grip, uh, and he will tell you the exact status of that. If it's not ready now, it's really, really close. All right, and we are almost out of time. So let me see if there's any last questions that I want to pull out. All right, uh, NICI is asking, I don't know that much about snaps, but is it possible or could it be possible in the future to have a snap for a whole desktop environment like Mate, uh, including their apps and without any major changes to the system like a changed login screen? Uh, so basically, yeah, uh, the Mate community is working on one now providing snaps. Uh, it won't be one snap, it will be, you know, multiple snaps. So basically everything will be, every shared, you know, services and so on will be, you know, one big runtime snap. But then, you know, every apps will be on their own snaps. And so they will be confined and they will all have their own security policy and so on. Uh, and so you will be able, you know, as well, you know, to update only some application if you want uh, from it and it will be directly, you know, uh, coming from upstream. So it will be untouched, you know, Mate uh, application. So yeah, so just in short, yes, this is coming. All right, and uh, the last question for this session is gonna be from uh, Nick011. He's asking, will the Ubuntu Flash tool be available as a snap soon? So that's a really interesting question. I don't know if anybody's currently working on it. Um, I do know that there's a, a snap interface for using the USB connections that might need to be fixed before you can do that. Uh, I've currently filed a bug report for that, uh, for the Arduino IDE to connect to the devices. Uh, but other than that, I would think it's possible to do. They might need to change some things about where it downloads and stores uh, the device images. But uh, wow. that should be possible. Yeah, as you just see have to check possible. and see if anyone's working on it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, having access for to your SD card, for instance, for IoT device. Uh, so in dev mode, you know, like uh, so it means without uh, with very minimal confinement. Uh, this is possible as of today. Uh, confined, uh, this is going to be a little bit more work. So if anyone wants to jump on this, you know, like you're welcome. All right, and with that, we are out of time. Uh, if we missed any of your questions, uh, you can ask us in, in any of the other Ubuntu IRC channels, like hash Ubuntu-devel-desktop-touch-unity. Uh, there's all kinds of them. You can always just join the community team channel, which is hash Ubuntu-community-team. Um, I'm on there all the time, so you can ask any time in there. All right, so that's it for this week. Thank you, Didier, for coming on. Thank you, everyone in IRC, for all of your questions and keeping us busy for a whole hour. Uh, we will be back next week, uh, also on Tuesday at 15 UTC. Uh, that's 11 AM Eastern in the US. Uh, and again, we will have Thomas Voss on as our guest for that. So anything that's related to Unity and Unity APIs, uh, you can come and uh, get answers to those.
you can follow us on uh, YouTube. We're Ubuntu on Air on YouTube. Uh, we're also Ubuntu on Air on Twitter. You can follow us there. All right. Thank you, everybody. See you next Thanks week. See you. Bye. Bye.